Hey guys, and welcome back to another Borkano Game video. Today's video is going to be about Nightmare Priority, and we're going to go over PvE first, and then we'll cover PvP after. So, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to go to Upgrade and Sell. And the reason why you want to go to Upgrade and Sell, we're going to take a look at your Nightmares and what you have. You're going to see here on my left, I have the Hateful Water Golem, yeah. And the reason why I want us to take a look at our Nightmares is mainly to see not if you have Hateful Golem, if you have Golem in general. And the reason why Golem is so important, you can see here this is Greater Golem, this is actually just another version of Normal Golem. So at this version, you know, ideally you get Hateful Golem. I'll have like the drop tables in the links below for the Google Sheets that shows where you can get these Nightmares. But ideally you get Hateful Golem. And the reason why is because you'll notice that he has Blessed Armor too. And the reason that you want him is because if you don't have Library Wisp, he provides uh, two buffs to you, physical and magical, right? And the reason why that's important is because buffs last pretty much the whole entire fight. So whether it's PvE or PvP, you want to buff as soon as possible. That is like the number one priority because we all know about buff snowballing and I'll probably cover like snowballing buffs in a different video. So after you verify you have Golem, uh, if you don't have Golem or if you don't have Library Wisp, ideally get him. Obviously, you know, Library Wisp is better, but like he's not, like he doesn't get like much better until you L him. So technically at the SS version, you still have the same buff as Hateful Golem, yeah? So the next buff that you're going to be working on is getting Hateful Hound. Hateful Hound, uh, he drops from certain story modes. If you want like the highest stat one, quote unquote, which doesn't really matter because there's not really much of a difference. There's like a four point difference between the wind one and the water one. But this is the only nightmare currently out that provides uh, physical and magical attack boost uh, to your frontline in Kalo and in PvE. And ideally, you can. it's actually better to cast the attack one first but the thing is, is if your enemy team has library or if you have a stronger buff, obviously you would cast a stronger buff. But whenever Mitra comes out, and Mitra is going to unfortunately be a paid nightmare, he's pretty much going to be like the premium tier like attack buffer, yeah? But for now, like everyone can use Hateful Hound, and Hateful Hound can do the exact same job. And the reason, and I already talked about why he's important. Yes, it costs 200 SP. Ideally, your supports are weighing, you know, for example, the Hateful Golem and the Hateful Hound. Ideally, those go on your supports, and your vanguards can run like the strong, like, SR nightmares that they need to run. But these guys aren't bad for stat sticks, but they're mostly here for, you know, being able to buff at the very beginning of a fight, yeah? And. The next thing that I want to cover is nightmares that specifically debuff. Now, nightmares that specifically debuff, there it's there's two of them. There's Hateful Bird and Hateful Plant. Really quick, the reason why I'm not using Fina is because look at this. Song of Camaraderie 1 moderately raises attack, right? Moderately. If you look at Hateful Hound, it's greatly and it has two on it. Fina doesn't get her buff until she evolves, as in she doesn't unlock the ability to greatly raise attack. Which is a huge issue because I don't believe you should technically evolve Fina because the resources are so expensive. Ideally, you use Hateful Hound because he's much cheaper, and, obvious, and I think, in my opinion, you should use your evolution mats on something like, you know, if you have Lindworm or Freeze Golem or Gulu from, you know, the Royal User Service, right? Um, ideally, that is the way to go uh, to evolve one of the big three or if you pulled, you know, gluttonous errors or what have you. But anyways, let's, let's go back to debuffing. Now, Hateful Bird and Hateful Plant, for PvE purposes, this is only going to be used at the boss phase. And then in PvP purposes, you'll cast this as soon as, you know, the buff phasing is, the buff phase is over because you want to debuff your opponents, right? And they do the exact same thing, sort of, except Hateful Bird lowers attack and Hateful Plant lowers defense. So it's really important that your supports have this in the rear or your vanguards can have this if they don't have strong nightmares. So you can pretty much lessen the blow of them buffing. Like for example, if they casted, you know, Hateful Golem, it, you, you will cancel it out by using Hateful Plant. If you casted, you know, Hound, 
then you can pretty much negate it by using Hateful Bird, right? So on and so forth. It's like the, it's it's all to prevent everyone from buffing like crazy, uh, whether it's in PvE or in PvP, because buffs are extremely powerful in this game. Especially in the late game phases, when the CP differences are much closer. In the early game, it doesn't matter as much, but in the late game, like, buffs, they carry, like, Kahlo very hard, and the same thing with any PvE fight that's fairly difficult. And as we are moving into, like, the later phases of the game, like, for example, when we go into story, and then you go into events, Metal Memory of Dolls, in hard mode, there is going to be... You'll see here, verse 12 is 140k rating, which is 140,000 points to do it. I don't think a lot of people will be able to do that. I think like the best most free to play players can do is like verse four and like up to verse six. And you can do verse six with lower CP so long as you are managing your buffs and debuffs appropriately, debuff on the last phase, buff on the earlier phases, etc., etc. The next thing you're gonna do after you debuff, depending on the situation. Uh, Simone is from the Metal Exchange if you're not sure where to get her, this is for the near event, yeah. You can see Simone on the right. Now, the biggest thing is that this is very timing specific, or you can cast this early. For PvE, you cast this right before the boss is about to drop, or you pretty much cast this as soon as you want. It's up to you. Ideally, you cast this on the boss phase, in my opinion. And then for PvP, that's very situational. I would suggest running something like, you know, moderately reduce SP cost for all allies in the phase when Shinma or Demon buff is about to occur so people don't have to jump into SP recovery because this will help mitigate, you know, people jumping in SP recovery when they're supposed to be casting skills, yeah? So you, you just don't want people trying to cast skills when and then they run out of sp and they go into sp recovery because then obviously you're going to use shinma buff and people are going to rage and get mad so on and so forth but at the same time she gets the job done perfectly um only evolve her like if you for sure think you're not going to get gluttonous Eris. Gl gluttonous Eris is like the only one she's like the number one like sp producer right now in the game more will come out in the future so after we've talked about sp reduction there are other like SP reduction nightmares like uh, Drizilla and Clock Rabbit, but honestly, in my opinion, I don't think they're worth because they only reduce like certain skills slash weapons. Uh, personally, I just don't think it's worth because it's 50 SP, and that 50 SP could be used somewhere else. Unless you're running like a mono like Elemental Grid, which is perfectly fine, then obviously you would cast Drizilla. Um, like, for example, you would technically want to run a modern water grid if you can, or specifically, you know, like verse 12, like verse 9, all of these future hard mode events for the near. Drazilla is going to be an MVP because, you know, ideally you're running just water. For that situation in PvE, it would be very ideal. In PvP, it's harder to say because not everyone can run model grid because, you know, not everyone can afford to run even just mono weapon. Anyways, now that we've covered those, let's talk about the actual effectiveness increasing um, nightmares. Now, this is obviously dependent in PvE based off of the boss you're fighting. Um, since we are in like a fire, like technically like we are fighting fire enemies because Simone and pretty much the near event is all fire types, yeah? You click here, and then you tap this thing, this thing, oh, and then you click her face. It'll say she's like a fire type. You can also like go all the way back here and just click her face right here, and it'll do the same thing. So most of the enemies will be fire type, so you wouldn't use a Gulu, you'd use Freeze Golem, etc, etc. Now, you don't have to like use Freeze Golem. The alternative to Freeze Golem is uh, Bondage Alice which is the Nightmare version of Alice, which is right here, right? You could use this free Nightmare. Uh, you can get her in 4-10, I believe, for Alice uh, story mode. And 
you know, you don't have to level her up, and she's a free nightmare. Yes, she costs 50 SP, 200 SP in Kalo, but, you know, she's a freeze golem alternative, and she will be useful for fighting uh, Simone in the future, especially for hard mode, or just even, like, fighting Simone on verse 8. So, that's something to look forward to. Like, as a free-to-play, this is very available to you. Now, Probably like the most complicated thing and I really really like digress this is technically situational. You can cast stuff like Digitalis or Nightmares that are similar to Digitalis and this is of course if you're countering someone with a specific element. So it greatly reduces the effectiveness of enemy water skills. So this mainly applies to like if you're fighting like Jormungandr or if you're fighting like, you know, for example, if you're fighting Simone, you can find the Nightmare that greatly reduces specifically fire, uh, uh, fire water skills. Yeah, there's a free Nightmare, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so there's Nightmare of Depravity, which you can get from Cinderella's story. And it will great, she, this is probably going to be a very, very premium tier nightmare or you can get the machine life form machine life form you can get from the actual i think it's gun version is it gun version no it's not gun version no. it is going to be just like machine life form in general so he's probably going to be useful for the actual simone fight because he's going to reduce damage from enemy skills that are fire type uh, there's no way to get Eliza, and there's no way to get Grief Spider. And you can get Greater Snake, but... Uh, if, if you can, get Machine Life Form, in my opinion. Just because he is really decent for a stat stick, if you're free to play and you don't have any SRs. But, you know, if you don't really mind, then you don't have to run this at all. Like I said, this is a very situational nightmare. And I think it's very difficult to cast this in Kalo, because... You would have to wait for your opponent to cast a Gulu for, you know, this example, right? And ideally, you don't hold a Nightmare that is situational. Um, all of the Nightmares that I've included that are technically, like, more free to play, ideally, your supports are running it, and your Vanguard are, are running, like, Nightmares as strong as possible. Anyways, this covers this video sp uh, specifically for Nightmare Priority in... July 18th 2020 because this will change as we progress into the game yeah as we go into the game we'll get different types of nightmares that can do different kind of things but just to recap the biggest things that you're going to want is you're going to pretty much go you want to buff in the very beginning so you want to use hateful golem and hateful hound and then after that you want to time your debuffs Specifically in Kalo, debuff as soon as possible. Yeah, Hateful Bird, and then Hateful Plant, and then in PvE, you'll debuff at the boss phase. And then after that, you will use SP Management, ideally at the boss phase, or you can do it for Kalo specifically during Shinma time. I would highly suggest using it during Shinma time. And then after that, you can start, you know, pretty much stomping the team by casting, you know, uh, an Agulu, or um, I believe it's the Justice form, the Justice form of this nightmare. It is. Oh no, it's Brutality. <laughs> My bad. It's Brutality version. You can cast Brutality, which is Red Riding Hood, and then so on and so forth. Then you can use SP Management depending on the situation. This is more suggested for PVE. And then, like I said, you can use Counter Nightmares to counter certain. Uh, skills that are being procced. Ideally, I highly suggest getting Nightmare of Depravity because it's going to be very useful or getting Lifeform um, S on my right hand side. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz.